people this early on a Saturday morning. Yes. Are you awake? Thank you for getting up on your I, Saturday. Yeah. And spending it with us. Um, my brother posted something last night on Facebook that had like how much sleep you need by your um, like your zodiac sign, and I'm a Pisces, and it said I need 19 hours of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I was like, that sounds about right, actually. Yeah. Yeah, what was Sagittarius? <laughs> um, oh, I have to look it up, oh, actually. It's okay. Find it. it was funny. It's okay. Um, I think but we his need a lot was of sleep one. one. Yeah, for Scorpios. Any Scorpios in the house? Do you not need sleep? Is that true? Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Where'd you get, where so, did you get your resource from? So, wait, from? Facebook memes are not true? <laughs> They're not hard and fast? Science? Oh, okay. Who would have thought? <laughs> okay. First question. Yeah. Can you give us a little about um, a little bit about your educational background, your work experience, and leading up to what you do today? Yeah. Um, so I have a dual master's um, from Leslie in expressive therapy and clinical mental health. Um, I worked for the first six years of my career in a partial hospital in Boston. Um, well, just north of Boston, um, predominantly with women and children, um, but then across the lifespan in day treatment. Um, and then I was recruited uh, and worked for three years um, starting a partial hospital program for the same organization in Florida, which was, I only did because I really loved my clinical director. Because <laughs> I couldn't imagine living in Florida. And then um, when that program was up and running, once it was going really well with her blessing, um, I applied to a clinical supervisor position um, in Bend here. You know what? I wanted yeah. you to give them that little bit of information about Mr. Rogers. Oh, yeah. So, um, so I had actually, at Leslie, um, worked with a woman named Norma Canner, and she was an associate of Fred Rogers, as in the Mr. Rogers. And so I learned... I got my um, dance and play therapy training from Norma Canner, who has since passed away, but she was an incredible human being, and actually you can watch now her, um, there's a documentary about her life called A Time to Dance. It's really beautiful. Um, so yeah. I love Mr. She Rogers was, growing up. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Right? And she was adorable. I mean, like 4'11", and just tiny and really oh my sweet. Goodness. So yeah. And then something else that you wrote here is, what is uh, the sanctuary model? Yeah, so while I was working on the psych unit in Florida, um, I was noticing how the system was actually re-traumatizing our, our clients. People were coming in and being reactivated by a lot of the, just a lot of the unfortunate parts of um, American healthcare. And I was doing some research about it and came across a book called Destroying Sanctuary. And it was the work of Dr. Sandra Bloom who created the Sanctuary Model of Trauma-Informed Care. And I thought, whatever I do next in my career, wherever I'm headed next, this is a model that I want to implement. And so I mentioned it in my interview six years ago and the county, um, we started implementation in July of 2018. So, nice, yeah, nice. good job. Yeah. Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. Six years. Elizabeth, can you share a little bit about your story with us? Yeah, so, um, which is so funny when I was printing out my notes, that didn't even come up. So, um, so I, I just, I guess I first want to say before I share my own story that trauma is universal and it's defined by the individual. So I, I hear, I've heard a lot as we've prepared for this conference, people say, well, I don't have that much trauma or nothing really bad happened to me. Um, this is life and none of us get out alive. So uh, adversity, pain, um, loss, it's part of the human experience. So, you know, it's, it's again, universal and defined by the individual. Um, my own personal lived experience, I, um, I was born in Providence, which um, is also the name of my book, because I can't put my life in an elevator speech. It's really hard to do that. Um, uh, my father um, struggled with alcoholism and addiction. My mom struggled with workaholism and perfectionism. Um, we started life in a small housing project in Winsocket, Rhode Island, which my dad still refers to as the armpit of the country. Uh, 
it's, yeah, got a 48% child poverty rate, so still to this day, generational poverty, it's really hard to get out. Um, and a lot of things happened, um, but I would say primarily the things that have been most difficult to overcome were um, roughly a decade of sexual abuse, um, witnessing a fatality when I was about three or four years old, um, some homelessness, intermittent, um, we moved a lot. Um, I think that poverty adds a layer of difficulty to trauma that is um, often invisible, especially in America. People see it as the land of opportunity, and um, that's not necessarily the case for everyone. So, um, yeah. Wow. Did I cover? Yeah, yeah you, it's yeah. a lot. That's, <laughs> it is a lot. Um, wow. It is a lot. Yeah. But again, like I say, I want to qualify everyone's pain that you don't yes. have to have this volcano erupt over your childhood to say that you have a need for healing in your life, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and why did you decide to tell your story yeah. um, with that, with that yeah. article with Mark Ian? So a lot of things had come together to create that opportunity, um, but I think in part the, the want and need to tell my story is something that's been gnawing at me for years. Um, silence is like a prison, um, and so Talking about it is how we get free. Um, it's very healing, and I found that through writing as well, um, talking with other survivors in particular, and, and sharing our writing that way was incredibly healing. So there was a healing element to it. Because when you said you're currently working on a book, do you know? It's like 98% finished. I'm, yeah, <laughs> I'm looking for awesome, an editor. I'm looking for, yeah, an agent at this point um, awesome. and somebody to get it published. But and we do have someone as a presenter writing your story. So is two that of them actually. Katie yeah. Yoder. Katie Yoder. Yeah. And Martina Muller. Martina Muller. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully so, so yeah. And speaking of that, um, you know, journaling and sharing in um, safe community, um, you know, in small groups with the therapists, all those kinds of things can be incredibly healing. And so, I just want to say, as a caution to people who might be wrestling with this, that um, there is a want and a need to tell our story, and that's a beautiful thing. But you want to make sure that you are. Um, you're sa in a safe enough place to do it, and um, that you are not cheating your destiny, right? Like your story is a gift, and you don't just wanna throw it away or give it to anyone. Um, it's really precious, and I would highly recommend, um, there's a YouTube video with uh, Dr. Tressie Cotum and Roxanne Gay, um, which I had shared with our team, um, but it, it's talking about the trauma narrative and how to tell it safely and just some, um, some things to be aware of and, and yeah. So if you're thinking of doing that, I would recommend watching that. So start nice and slow. Yeah. Yes, um, so what helped you heal from your trauma or traumas? Yeah, so I believe that uh, healing is uh, work that we undertake over the course of our lives, right? Like it doesn't happen in a minute. It's not a one and done kind of thing. Um, but some of the things that have been incredibly helpful, therapy, my faith, I think EMDR is a miracle. Um, I call it washing the window. It's just amazing. We got amazing. a couple people for that too. Yeah, we do. Um, I have actually also done some healing work with, where's Hank? Hi, Hank. Another amazing presenter. <laughs> some energy healing work that was um, really profound um, and just deeply freeing. Um, so yeah, uh, I've also had an eating disorder um, since I was 12, and so uh, working with medical doctors, I really love my doctor here in Bend. It's um, holistic care. And working with a nutritionist is something that I've had to do throughout my life to maintain that. So, yeah. You happen to have a nutrition expert here, a couple of them too, right? Great. <laughs> yeah, I think I, we've got those covered. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Oh, and meditation, I forgot. I've actually, um, where's Barb? Is Barb here? Barb is here. She's in the back somewhere. somewhere. Yeah. Well, and I, I taught myself to meditate in 10th grade, and I think that was one of the best gifts that I had given myself early on because we don't always have access to a therapist or medications or things like that. And so um, learning to have the ability to control my thoughts, um, you know, just 
control that monkey mind was yes. really, really helpful. Yeah. And we have dance meditation. So for those of us yeah. that can't sit still for for meditation, for meditation, yeah, moving the, meditation, yeah, moving meditation, yeah, that we have as well. So. Good. Um, so, w what advice would you give someone just that is suffering with trauma? What advice would you give to them? Yeah. Um, so something that I do every day, a thousand times a day, is I just say I love you, um, and I think that's a really great place to begin is to just start by loving yourself and say it again and again and again until you believe it. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Simple but hard to do sometimes, right? Yes. To, to look at yourself in the mirror and say, mm -hmm. I love you. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, and to yourself. That's, and to yourself, exactly. That can be hard. Yeah. That can be hard. Until it's really easy and then you just do it all the time out loud and your husband comes in the room and goes, babe, who are you talking to? I love you. I love you. Walk away from the mirror. <laughs> Elizabeth, walk away from the mirror. Yeah. Um, so you developed the, resolu the Resolution Diamond. Yes, I did. Um, how did that come about? Yeah, so it had started as work that I was doing with clients years ago. Um, and it's based on the Stephen Cartman drama triangle. So there's this theory that um, when, at the moment that we're traumatized, right, we fight, flight, and freeze. All the time after that, if we get activated in our environment, we are in a state of trauma reenactment. So we're acting as if that trauma were happening again. And so the Karpman Drama Triangle identified three behaviors or primary roles that we fall into when that's happening. And that's the bully, the victim, and the rescuer. I think we have hurt those words in our society, in our culture, to, t to say to someone, hey, you're acting like a victim is kind of an insult. Um, and so the Resolution Diamond, through um, our, our process of sanctuary implementation, I, I was crafting this tool as a way to present this reenactment concept as part of training in a way that didn't use those words. So, and in a way that incorporated um, the hero's journey and some options for how to get off of or out of that triangle of drama. And so really it's about, it incorporates looking at um, ways that we empower, restore power to ourselves, using the hero's journey as, as kind of a map that encircles all of it. So it's um, recognizing that we don't have to um, cut out or be ashamed of the parts of us that are those, that bully or that victim or that rescuer, but how do we incorporate it into who we become? So really shining in our wholeness. Um, the, the diamond piece came while I was out on a run and I was listening to Rihanna and I was like, oh, well, there it is. It's shine bright like a diamond. Like, who doesn't want to do that? So Exactly. <laughs> we like shiny things. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Elizabeth. So, yes. <laughs> Thanks. Everyone. Thank you.